Hi, welcome back to my HANA developer channel. My name is Srikant. In today's session, we're going to look at some of the additional functionalities of calculation views in HANA Access Advanced Server. In my previous videos, I've shown you how to model a simple calculation view in XSC. In this session, we're going to see further modeling features provided in HANA 2.0 SP03 version. Let's look at them one by one. I'm going to log on to web ID for HANA. I already logged on here. And this is my project and I have created several uh, design time artifacts in my previous session. I'm going to use them in uh, today's session. Uh, I've got several tables and those tables got filled uh, using uh, CSV files. On top of those tables, I've created a basic dimension uh, type calculation view, which is um, business partner. Uh, and it has two different tables, which are business partner data and address data on the right side. So I'm going to make a simple join to connect these two tables and get the information from the uh, second table, which are the uh, the the other attributes of city, region, and country for the each for each business partner. Then I'm going to project them as a an output for this dimensional calculation view. I also have another calculation view here, which is um, a fact uh, cube based calculation view, and uh, it is going to access another. A set of tables which are sales order items and sales order um, header. I'm going to uh, align them to show in a um, in a better way. Yeah, um, I have sales order item and sell, uh, and sales order header. I'm going to join these two tables uh, to get both header and item information, and I'm going to access another. Um, a dimensional calculation view which I have just built before uh, that is for the business partner. So these are the two different calculation views I'm going to uh, use in today's session to explain the um, additional features of the calculation views in XSE. Okay let's get started with those additional features what I was talking about. The first one is going to be data lineage. So if I wanted to see the complete data lineage for a specific calculation view, I can go to the calculation view in the context menu, I can choose other functions and then say data lineage. So it is going to show uh, the source objects for building this calculation view. There are three different sources. Um, there are two direct tables, which are sales order header, and then other one is sales order item. And the other one is uh, another CV, which is created for business partner. So I can further expand this uh, CV to see um, the data sources for those for those for, for for this object. So I can see that this CV is using the business partner master data table and address uh, master data database table. So uh, with that, I, I was able to see all the uh, data lineage for this particular calculation view. So this is the data lineage for a calculation view. Uh, I also, ca uh, I also uh, can see the data lineage for uh, a specific column in the color calculation view. So how do I'm going to see that? I'm going to close this one. I'm going to access semantics and I'm going to um, choose a column which is um, city and then I click on the data lineage. It is going to highlight uh, the data lineage for this particular column, how this data column is being projected from bottom to the top. Um, so similarly I can also uh, get the data lineage for a in, for a column in any other view also. In this case, I'm going to get the data lineage for one of the fields in the business partner. So I'm going to select region and then say data lineage. It is going to show projection to the top. 
if I choose the other one country and uh, it's going to display the other side of it because this co this country field comes from the other uh, projection all the way up to uh, the semantics uh, this is about the data lineage we can do data lineage for a column uh, and also we can do a data lineage for a calculation view my next option is uh, getting the dependent objects to analyze the uh, impact so whenever we perform any modification to the calculation view we wanted to see the impact of that particular action so how many um, downstream calculation views are getting affected with the change so uh, uh, we used to do very used list to get the list of objects which are affected by making a change to the cal current calculation view uh, similarly uh, in XSA uh, we have got a functionality to check uh, the dependent objects for any specific calculation view. Uh, let's see how I'm going to do this here. So I'm, currently I'm accessing business partner, uh, a dimension, dimensional calculation view, and I wanted to see the impact analysis for this particular CV. So I go to the other actions and then say impact analysis. So it's going to display uh, all the calculation views or all the objects which are uh, using this particular calculation view in the system. So in, in this case, uh, CV business partner is being used by um, CV sales analysis. If there are any other further downstream views um, uh, using any of them, it is going to display uh, further to this. So with that, we can uh, get the impact analysis for any specific calculation view. Uh, uh, to list out all the objects and then uh, we can take an action uh, accordingly to make the changes in, in the downstream view, views. Uh, the, next, uh, the next feature I'm going to talk about is performance analysis. So with this feature I'm going to know uh, how the tables are being accessed. Uh, are there any partitions involved in, uh, in the source tables uh, etc. Uh, these are going to uh, help me in understanding uh, the data table size uh, and um, and the data number of records uh, being processed in this particular calculation view, etc. So how do I'm go how do I do this one? I open a calculation view here, and I'm going to switch on the performance analysis. As soon as I switch on the performance analysis, it's going to be uh, and in, in every node, whatever I, I select, I'm going to see a performance analysis tab in the end uh, of the properties. So if I click on performance analysis tab for the, um, uh, for the source table, which is in the bottom, I'm going to select this one. And I can see that in my performance analysis tab, I have um, a data source, which is the sales order item. And I have 6046 entries coming from this table. And if I can switch to another table and I can have the header table, I can see that number of rows are 1029. And I haven't had any partition on these tables, so I don't get this one. So these are the different um, features which can help us in understanding uh, the data size and data number of records when the calculation view is uh, when the calculation view is being processed is debugging a CV. So I'm going to open a calculation view, and and I wanted to debug uh, by each node. So I wanted to know what is going what is happening in each node. So if I can switch on my debugging view, so I can go to the debugging this view option, and I can see an SQL prepared uh, for this specific CV. So I can change the um, SQL prepared by default and then run that. Now I go and uh, uh, click on the semantics and go to the debug query and I can see that um, this is the SQL prepared by default. So I can run this SQL uh, by executing and it's going to display uh, uh, and then I'm going to display each node what is going to happen. I, I'm going to check uh, the join uh, which is below and then I'm going to run the data. So at this level this is the SQL prepared and the data uh, 
is is uh, shown in the bottom so i can further go down and and see uh, other nodes what what actually uh, they are getting the data for so in this first join i can see uh, this is the join and then i switch to debug query and then can run it uh, and then i see the data output for this particular join uh, similarly i can go to any of the nodes and then run the query and even i can change the query to understand how the instantiation process is happening in the calculation uh, uh, engine uh, so there are several uh, uh, things you can do in the debug query uh, 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 menu uh, to understand uh, uh, how the joins working how uh, how the projections and aggregations happening in 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 processing the calculation view uh, we can also go to the debug prospective and keep a break breakpoints and then uh, run the uh, processing steps in the debugger uh, window uh, when we have uh, several uh, scripted based calculations which are user table user table defined functions then we can use the debugger window to get into the uh, 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 exact error and exact troubleshooting point what we wanted to know so we're not showing this one in this example uh, I gave a simple example to show how the debugging a, a CV can uh, can can be done in XSA and my next option uh, or feature is going to show you a rename and refactor uh, this is not a new feature or new um, thing in XSA. It's been there in uh, XS Classic also. So uh, I can actually go into the business partner CV and then choose other actions and then say rename and refactor. So it is going to ask me um, references in listed impacted views will be automatically adjusted. So yes, uh, the, whatever the views which are uh, using this upstream view uh, will get affected uh, because of refactoring uh, it loses its uh, uh, the package definition and the folder uh, path so I'm, I'm fine with that if and then I just build after the refactor is being completed so that the uh, downstream views also will get changed to their uh, correct references the build completed successfully so uh, the refactor has been completed for this view and also the downstream views also um, um, uh, got to the uh, correct reference in 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 the build so that's all uh, for this um, today's session um, the additional features uh, which are uh, provided in HANA XSA 2.0 uh, in web ID for HANA uh, thanks for watching this video bye bye